Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to take apart the PMP Beast. Um, I'm really curious about this knife, so I figured the disassembly would be interesting at least. Um, I did do a little bit of preparation for this. Several of these screws here along the backspacer were very, very tight. Um, so much so that in order to get a good enough grip to turn them, I actually had to get a surgical glove just for some traction. I went ahead and popped them loose, screwed them back in. So I haven't disassembled it yet, but I did loosen up the screws a little bit. Um, some of them seem like they might have been cross-threaded, so if you're disassembling this along with the video, keep that in mind. Um, they're fairly deep, and all these here are T8, along with all these on this side, except for the pivot. The pivot on both sides is T10. So you'll need a T8 bit, a T10 bit. Got my bit driver right here. Knife lubricant of choice, some rubbing alcohol, and something to clean it with. I'm move that out there. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start off with the body screws. We have the stop pin here and the back spacer. So start at the bottom. Remember to keep these in order. That way when you do go to put everything back together, you won't end up putting anything in the wrong place. I do believe all these screws are the same size, obviously apart from the pivot, but just in case, try to keep them somewhat organized. We got the stop pin up here, we'll go ahead and do it. I'm actually really, really enjoying this knife so far, which is stupid. I will say it can't cut anything um, I tried to open the letter with it earlier, did not go well. I think what I'm actually going to do is take this up to my uh, local knife shop and have them reprofile the blade. I was just going to sharpen it earlier, but I have a Lansky system and even at the 30 degree angle, it's not steep enough. So I think I'm going to have them reprofile it down to maybe a, maybe a 20, somewhere, or maybe a little higher than that, somewhere around there. Which isn't really too much of an edge on here anyway. It's going to, of course, um, pull away, you know, some of the material, some of the coating, things like that. But I don't think it'll be too bad. Go ahead and do the stop pin here. But yeah, I think I'm gonna get this reprofile. Just I, I originally planned on getting it mainly just to try it, and then I may be considered, you know, gift, gifting it to someone. But I'm actually enjoying it. It's so unlike anything else in my collection. I don't think I would want another one this size, but it's very unique. Of course. So you can see the clip here is just uh, milled by hand. There is some anodization here from the previous owner. They tried to anodize the whole thing. It didn't go over well. Anyway, um, that's why there's a little bit of anodization. I'm actually considering having this custom anodized as well. Um, so that should be everything except for the pivot. Let's go ahead and switch this out to a T10, and we'll get to work on the pivot. I love the choice of uh, screw sizes they used here. A T6, I've had some issues with some of them stripping in the past, and I'm just not a huge fan. Um, T8, I've never really had any, any issues. Um, and T10, most definitely not. They're, they're plenty large enough. There's your pivot keep that there because we're going to want to clean that. And now hopefully the knife will come apart. It does not seem like it though. So let's go ahead and hold the lock bar over. Go ahead and pull the knife out. Making sure to keep up with our washers. There's other ones on this side. I'm just going to leave it on there for now. Let's see if we can kind of maybe get this loose. There's obviously no other screws on here. It seems tightened down. I don't believe this has ever been disassembled. You know, with as much grip as I can get on this thing, you'd think it'd come off pretty easily, but I'm not seeing any movement at all. This thing is locked down. Um, in case I can't get it open, let me move the lighting just a little bit so you can kind of see. You can see some of the interior milling there. So they have attempted to reduce the weight a bit, but it's still very, very heavy, very large. Yeah, this is just not wanting to come apart. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think I have anything wide enough that's like plastic to kind of 
turn and pop this open. Um, let me see if maybe I can find something. Okay, I finally got this open um, by using my leather end and wrapping this up and kind of using it as a pry bar to pop that out. Okay, good lord. So a lot of that's going to be cut out, but that's what happened. That's what went down when y'all weren't watching. Okay, um, so let's take a look. I can finally swing this over to the side. And we can take a look at what's going on here. See if I can get a stop pin out. Yep, there we go. Okay, so a ton of interior milling, um, with good reason. The, even this this scale right here probably weighs as much as my Spider Crow Dragonfly does. It's ridiculous. Okay, so possibly part of the reason is these two um, parts of the backspacer do have a Chicago screw. This one's smaller, I believe it goes directly into the backspacer. Um, I think getting that off would be quite problematic, but I may try anyway because I am stupid. Um, yeah, I'm thinking that's, never mind, it's not that hard. I think the first time disassembly will be the most difficult on this one. I gotta tell you, this is a pain in the ass, though. The guy was obviously not intending for this to be disassembled, or the manufacturer, rather. I doubt it's too much the designer's fault. Come on, man. Goodness gracious. I keep getting a little bit of give to it. There we go. Okay, so somewhat weighty backspace here. It feels like it may be titanium as well. Um, pretty interesting little pattern on the inside. Let's see if I can show you any of that. Yeah, you can see it right there. A little bit of a pattern on the inside. So yeah, we got some Chicago screw style brackets here um, that I'm probably going to try to remove along with the stop pin just so next time I go to do it it's not quite such a pain in the ass to get apart. Um, and one of the main reasons I wanted to assemble it too is if I if I do have it um, sorry about that um, if I do have it custom anodized I want them to be able to disassemble it fairly easily versus, you know, having to struggle with it and potentially uh, damage their equipment or damage the knife or something like that. So to remove this, I'm just going to take this. I use this microfiber cloth for a bunch of dirty stuff. <laughs> like lit literally dirty stuff, not... Uh, oh, God. That's perfect. I didn't mean to do that, by the way, but that's hilarious. I'm going to stay it can stay in the video. Um, but, yeah, I'm just going to try to... See if I can get this off at all. It seems like it's just shearing the cloth. Yeah, a little bit. Maybe these little pins down here, maybe. It's hard to get enough traction to get them off without damaging um, anything, because I don't want to scratch them up. But I certainly do want them off of here as well. So that's not going to be tight enough, so we're going to have to go here. Uh, yeah, even gripping as tight as I can, it's not it's not doing anything. Okay, well, we're going to leave this on there and pretend those aren't a problem. Um, it's not going to come off. That's fine. I'll worry about it. If I do decide to get it custom anodized, I'll make sure to have it all cleaned off. Okay, it's a huge part of this video is going to get chopped out just because of all that, including that part probably. Um, so we have the basic parts here. We have the blade over here with the washers. We have the scales, we have the backspacer, and we have the pivot. Fairly simplistic knife and the clip. I'll just put that over there. Fairly simplistic knife. Get it all into frame for you here. So you can see what it should look like when you have everything disassembled. So this is going to be about what you're left with. Um, this is probably the worst dis disassembly I've ever had to do in my life. This was a massive pain. This sucked, and it really shouldn't have. Um, there's no Loctite on any of these screws or anything. I'm I'm just not sure what's going on. Um, but we'll go ahead and get this cleaned up, and then we'll get it reassembled, and hopefully everything will go back together. Um, I really didn't need to disassemble it for the action. I really just wanted to do it um, mainly to make sure that I could. That way, in case I did decide to do anything with it, it wouldn't be... Um, 
difficult. And also trying to get the blade back in while just removing without taking apart the scales um, I have found is very, 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 very problematic and I hate doing it. It sucked. I did do it um, twice. But that wasn't really a full disassembly. I wanted to show you guys, um, especially once I figured it was going to be a problem, I was like, well, I might as well show everybody so that if they get these knives, they can at least find one tutorial on how to disassemble it because I haven't seen any others. And now I understand why, because it sucks to try to disassemble this thing. But yeah, this is probably going to make it into my top five knives of the year, um, just because of how stupid it is. I actually had to use this um, today in a couple situations, and it, I'm not going to lie, it's, it, was, it sucked. Like, practicality-wise, it's, it's garbage. I don't hammer through car hoods or anything like that, so I just typically don't have a use for this. Um, I'm not really a hard use kind of guy. And also, this is made of a softer grade of titanium than normal, so even if you did hard use it, you might bend that lock bar, and you don't want that. And we'll go ahead and clean the blade off. And you can see Beast right there in D2, and then they have this nice detent ball track. I did put some Sharpie on the lock bar. I do have some, or did, sorry did have some um, lock stick, which is actually the first knife I've had that on, so that wasn't great, but it's okay. Let's see if I can get the inside of that pivot somehow, or the inside of that pivot hole somehow. I'm gonna, just going to continuously hit that over and over, let it rock around on my desk. There we go. Okay. Try to get this all this tissue fiber wiped off. It's not the best thing, but it's what I have. I probably should have grabbed a paper towel instead. It's fine. Go ahead and get the nano oil off of these washers. It actually makes sense that these washers for this one, um, I'm glad they did phosphor bronze instead of Teflon or nylon or whatever the hell kind of plastic they put in them. Um, because washers are more durable, um, especially out in the outdoors. Um, I can't see any practical application for this knife, but if there was one, it would exist outside, probably. So that's a pretty smart move on their part. Okay, let's get this bad boy put back together. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and install the pivot into the scale here. Missed some cleaning on the outside of the pivot hole there. All right. So we'll go ahead and get that inserted nice and easy. This is gonna kind of be our base for reassembly. So we'll go ahead and load on the back spacer just because I know that will be not super fun and while I normally would not put any nano oil or anything on these backspacer bits I'm going to just because it's such a pain to get them off that I know I'm gonna have to do it again so I'd rather there be just a tiny bit of some sort of lubrication that way when I do decide to disassemble this again, because it will inevitably happen, sometimes I just get bored and take apart knives for fun. I have a uh, bit of a problem. But when I do decide to do it, it'll be significantly easier. Because this time sucked. Oh my goodness. Looks like the reassembly is going to suck too. Nope, never mind. That was super easy. I think once it hit that nano oil, it just broke through, which is great. 
Um, what's tissue fiber everywhere? I need to stop using that. Um, okay, let's go ahead and get one of the washers put on. And I probably use too much lubricant on knives, but I don't care. I just want them to run nice and smooth. And I like to think that they do. I was watching a Birdshot IV, their review of this knife. Go check them out, by the way. They are a hilarious um, Frankie and Bird. I actually bought one of their uh, Bird pillowcases. I love it. It's super duper soft. I highly suggest you go and check that out as well if you like their um, Burr Birds. Uh oh, but they, um, in their view, they weren't able to get it to flick out with the thumb studs, and they called them ugly and impractical, and I disagree on the ugly front. Um, I am able to get it to flick out, which you'll hopefully see once I get done with this. I'm able to actually flip it open using one thumb, and thumb studs, and no wrist. I will say, though, when I misfire, or e actually even when it does actually successfully happen, which is most of the time, it hurts bad. Because these thumb studs, the tint on this thing is ridiculous. It has to be cause it's such a heavy blade. But um, it hurts, man. It it hurts, hurts. The tip of my thumb is so calloused just from two days. That's going to be lowered in post because that was just super loud. And it scared me, actually. Um, so we're going to put the top scale on. We have lubrication all the way throughout. We have the backspace around, make sure all of that is in place. Stop pin that wouldn't come out, so we ain't got to worry about that. And we'll just lower it right on here, and hopefully, it will kind of, sort of, snap into place. There we go. Go and make sure the pivot's pushed through. There we go. Everything appears to be pretty much in place, so we'll go and get everything screwed down. Um, I'll save the pivot for last. Let's go ahead and start with this side. I kept my screws organized, so I don't have an issue with this. And you will too, if you keep your screws organized. You'll be able to do it just as quickly as I am. Again, they're all the same size. I don't think it matters, but just want to throw that out there. I'm going to put the clip back on. Actually, I'm going to put the screws through first on this just so I can kind of get a rough, rough idea of where they go. There we go. Go ahead and switch back to our T8 pivot, which was, again, a fantastic choice by, I think, Max Ace is who made this knife. Make sure it's nice and tightened down, but not too tight. We don't want to have to break out the surgical glove to try to get these damn screws off. I've had fun with this, guys. Um, it's a 24 minute video for disassembly. You probably won't see anywhere close to 24 minutes, but I forgot to tell you, you know, I let you in on the trade secrets before I edit all this crap out. All the parts where I struggled to make this knife work with me. Um, I tried to be its friend. Come on, the screw's not one to. There, there we go. Kind of, no, nope. Looks like it's cross-threading almost. Let's start with the bottom one. We'll come back. Yeah, that one's going in just fine. Sorry, I know it's kind of hard to see. It's just difficult to get my hand up here without getting in the way. Let's see, come on, buddy. You could do it. I believe in you. Let me just, let me just remove it all together. Take a look. Yeah, everything looks fine down in there. Don't know why this is not working. Just to show you how much uh, torque this screw is trying to require, and literally move the knife. It's fine at first, then it gets down to those kind of middle threads and it just sucks. 
See if I can kind of push past them. Hold on one second. I'm just going to lift this up out of frame. Mm. Okay, it's getting hooked. We'll have to come back to that one. I'll go ahead and do the backspacer over here. And we'll flip the knife over. And go ahead and put in the screws for this side. If I can figure out the way to properly put a screw in and not do it backwards. I really thought this disassembly would be fairly simplistic. Um, it has quite a lot of screws, but so does the millet torrent. Um, this one, however, was just completely different. The millet torrent, um, it's, it's very well put together. It's very easy to disassemble. This thing is either the tolerances are too damn tight or not tight enough because this thing sucked to put back together. I'm gonna go ahead and close that up. And we'll go ahead and put in the pivot. I'll just hand tighten it for now. like the uh, the backspacer I'm sorry the what do you call that stop pin I hope I haven't been calling it a backspacer this whole time I'm gonna feel so dumb stop pin felt like it might be a little I don't know the scales feel a little tight oh we'll get we'll get it figured out we'll fix the action back to like it was for now I'll try to get this clip screw Oh my gosh, why is this 35 minutes long? I did it, I did it, I did it, it's over, the whole thing is over now. We just have to adjust the action, which is very, very, very tight, which is strange. So let's go ahead and dial that in, and then we're going to be done with this almost 40 minute long video. Like, what the fuck is that? Doesn't even make sense. You know what else doesn't make sense? I don't know why this knife is so tight. The pivot's actually loose. Okay, so yeah. What it was was the stop pin. Um, screws were too tight. So let's go ahead and get the action dialed in. And then we'll focus on the stop pin screws. Seems to be about good. Okay. All right, let's go and put these back in. That's so weird. I guess, I, I imagine what's happening is it's holding down the scales um, too tightly. And because of that, it's kind of smushing the blade. Which isn't good. So I'll tighten this very, very minimally and let's see. Yeah. Okay, just to show you guys uh, one more time, take a thumb right here. Sorry that shook the whole table because this thing weighs a ton. And you can do this. And there's no issue, you can't really shake it out, which is good for a uh, you know knife this size. So that is it. That is the 40 minute disassembly video for the PMP Beast because I will probably never take this apart again. Alright, thanks guys. Bye.